Hi. If you ever try to create custom widget where local player stats such as health and shield to be separate from the team member stats, you probably noticed that local player stats would be duplicated or at least not straightforward to implement. In this video, I will show you how to do that in an easy way. Before starting tutorial, I would like to mention that if you're interested in source files from my videos, you can find them on my Patreon. Link in the description of the video. Feel free as well to support us by following Girls Games on Fortnite.com. And now, let's begin. Okay, so to start, I will use item granted device, so then we can check our health. Then I have guard device. Everything is by default here except just team, it's wild and creatures. And then, of course, we need hood controller where we will input our player stats widget. And everything, as you can see here, I'm not overwriting except team info. It needs to be set to no. A little bit confusing, but uh, this is for Fortnite, right? So if you have team, Fortnite will show in own style that info. So you need to switch it off. Then it will work with your stats. So by scrolling down, I usually set this priority. I don't know how important it is, especially if you have only one this device. I like to set it on basically highest. And uh, here we have this our input where we need to input our this player stats. I will use uh, this already created widget uh, from my pretty old tutorial. I will share a link for that tutorial in the description. So I have this. So this is was for the team, yeah, to display team. Uh, quickly, I can show. So it's pretty simple. So this is a stack box. And then in stack box, we need to input another widget where we have already this um, player stats and specify view model. Okay. And I will change this to center. And yeah, I will see just in a second. And then this one where we created that widget. I think in the video it was anchored here in a corner but i just moved it into the center so it's anchored to the center position zero zero and then alignment 0 0.5 0 0.5 so basically it's anchored perfectly in the center everything else is fine here's our bindings and view model so you see, it's basically says like player info view model. If you look here, there are two of them. So there is team, this one, okay, and then there is uh, this uh, player info view model, right? If you want to make it work with again team, for this one, if it's used for the team, it needs to be this, right? And um, if you want just one this without any team then you need to select uh, this team again i have with a circular progress uh, this not progress bars like it's a health bar um there i used for the team because it was only a single one and in this one i used uh, this uh, play info because uh, this was used in a team so this is useful and as you can see bindings already done again check that video where i'm explaining all of this and then <clears throat> and then i used this in this stack box again and then we have that if you want some control so for example you can see if i will set it to one one it would be huge and actually let me change it back to default I can explain everything better, like so, nothing like that. So except this one, right? So we can position it. So we have, again, canvas panel, then we have overlay, which will hold everything together. And then I have another overlay. 
And it's actually, it's, it wouldn't imp to, important to have this second overlay, but I will use this overlay to clip uh, some of the stuff from here. And that's why I have two. So one, it's uh, holding this group, and another one is that. So I anchored it uh, in there, in the left corner. I'm not setting it size to content. And it's pretty much fine here. So now in this one, it's actually, there's no padding, everything center center. And here in clip, clipping, I will set it clip to bounce. So you see what's going on then. Because size of the original, right? It's this basically pretty much size. And uh, this one, it works fine. It basically fully fills that area. But stack box, inside of the stack box, this UI, it's bigger. And it, it's now we clipping it. We're not allowing it to go out of the bounds. That's why it basically it erases itself. Yeah, it's basically pat out. So what we could do if you can see like nothing is working here, but in a stack box, first of all, in overlay, if you want to increase, because we're not set it to size to content, you see like if I would set size to content, bam, it looks everything perfect, but then we can't cut it out, right? But we need to cut out. So if I will set it this, then I can control, for example, maybe I don't want to cut on the sides. And then you can see like I can control how this would look. And this is pretty much technique what we will use. So, as I said, like, um, player, local player will see his stats or her stats um, twice. Let's say I want to have this icon um, here on the top, but bigger, and then for the team smaller. Or maybe even for the team again. I'm reusing this for simplicity. You don't have to. You could even remove the frame and maybe just leave health and shield. Usually for the team, you have pretty small UI, so it's not distracting and not taking too much space on the um, on UI. So for the team, and then again, local player will see here on a separate widget, and then in here as well as the first one. So it's duplicate. You're basically wasting space, and it's like, why even have it here? So that's what we will do. We will crop it from this UI. and. Uh, how we will do that. First of all, I want to scale down this back again to 0 0.7, like so. As I said, like local player, basically local player, we're calling it who controls this character, right? And everything, uh, everyone else in a team, they online players. So local player should have a bigger UI here on top, and then this uh, team will be smaller. Okay. So is this, and, and by the way, you see here is four, you can set whatever number you want, and it's not like it will be there in the game. It's just preview. More players will come, and it will go and go and go, yeah? So basically you can preview like how many players maybe will be in a team. Will it be maybe 10? So you can preview how many, um, how it will look with 10 players. Maybe it looks good for you, maybe not, right? Like you can see like here I'm cropping. Maybe I need to make that uh, overlay bigger. Uh, but again, for simplicity of the tutorial, I will leave it as is. So now this first overlay, it's much bigger. So let's scale it down again, pretty close on the sides. And same here. I will need it move high a little bit, but first what I want to do, so in the stack box here on the top, so I don't want to offset, let's say like so. Actually working. Sometimes it's not working. So you can do this if it won't work. Uh, in some widgets, it didn't work. So then instead of uh, doing positive offset from the bottom, you can do negative from the top. It will work pretty much the same. So for example, if I will set like minus 90, or I think I had like minus 80. So it works pretty much the same. And now I can go back in here and I can scale it down even more, like so. I will leave it in here a little bit like this. I don't know, I had a glitch or something I'm missing. 
but basically if I will clip it perfectly on this line, it's actually in the game will be clipped too much. And I noticed that if I will do this way, in a game it will be fine. So something maybe with scale. I don't know. Maybe what can help as well, if you can try with this, instead of overlay, maybe size box. But okay, yeah. This is pretty much what I wanted. And now what I will do, I will now take this everything in here and I don't need even select everything it's enough to select first one and then Control c let's go back in here select canvas and Control v and I have my main one okay now we will just let's set it to zero zero anchor to the corner again zero zero so then I will start from the beginning now let's set yeah this one to zero and this one, no, zero as well. Yeah, perfect. And now we can offset it slightly. Maybe even make it bigger. Totally fine. Now let's go back to this one and position on the same line on the left side. Something like this. And this is pretty much the idea. Again, like this is smaller for the team and this is bigger. And we're almost done. What we just need to do, we need set up for these bindings. So we have here bindings. We're basically taking this into like into our stack box from array. And that's it. And because we already have bindings in this player UI, and it passes and it works. But actually for this one, we need separate bindings. And by the way, um, some people had issues with uh, how to pass this um, set item and basically um, it was a little bit confusing. For example, if you will select stack box where you actually need to pass this binding and then you click stack box and you don't even have where to receive that array and that's confusing and actually what you need basically needs to select a root of that so basically your main blueprint select that now in here again select this one and then find your stack box right and we'll always watch by the name especially if now we will have this one and then there could be another one so basically our way it's stack box 90 so you can see stack box 90 and then yeah you see like stack box 90 a view model so now expand this and then that you have it set item yeah so you see like it's pretty much same looking so a little bit hidden so you find that and then it's pretty much you're selecting that and you're selecting your array and like that but because i have it i don't need it okay so again um we need bindings for that i, I will put uh, this one on my next screen so I can see what I'm doing so it will be faster so I will just create these bindings I will pause the video I will create these bindings and then I will show you the bindings do it again to be quicker okay I think I've done it so I will show you quickly what we have so again this is for our that team and now all of this it's for this local player so in here we have text yeah for the player name and it looks basically like this i will just show this example and rest is pretty much same so you need to select this for the text and then you see you need to expand that and then you have all the parameters so there's our player name and uh, pretty much same in here so for the icon again brush set texture parameter avatar icon this is that name and then again here expand and you have avatar icon and all the rest parameters so it's again all these parameters explained in that again video with all this so i just copied all this okay so it looks like it should work let's grab that select this word controller play info widget input it 
and that's it. So let's push and test in the game. Okay. And as you can see, so I have second player helping me. And uh, if Nogwarts will hit second player, we'll see um, HP drop. <laughs> if they will hit. Yep. And same me. Just like that. So, yeah, it's it's working as it should. So hopefully now you will know, like, it's pretty easy. You just like a clipping out, uh, again, local player, because local player always first in that team info stats. So if you clip him, so then it will work like that. So again, use it. Keep in mind, sometimes this hood controller may not work so ideally, like sometimes it's back. So just always test um, before releasing in the maps. But yeah, have fun with that and good luck. I would like to say thank you to my all supporters. I appreciate your support. Thank you for your generosity. You can get project files on my Patreon or just buy me a coffee to support me. If you're interested in learning more about UFN materials, coding, widget UI and more, you can join our growing Discord community where we like to discuss UFN tips and tricks, showcase our work and help each other. You can find link in the description or in the channel header.